It's my great pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker, one of our first students in aeronautical engineering, astronaut Dr. Stephen Robinson. Steve received his bachelor degree in mechanical and aeronautical engineering in 1978. While he was at Davis, he worked at the University Airport, played tuba in the Cal Aggie Marching Band, and worked at KDVS radio station. After leaving Davis, he went on to receive his Master of Science degree in mechanical engineering in 1985 from Stanford. He founded and operated a graphics software company in Mountain View, California. He then went on to earn his doctorate degree in mechanical engineering in 1990 from Stanford University. In 1990, he was selected as branch chief of experimental fluid physics flow at NASA NASA Langley Research Center, and where he led a group of 35 engineers and scientists and engaged in aerodynamic and fluid physics research. In 1993, Dr. Robinson was awarded the NASA Sp Space Club Lowell Memorial uh, Engineering Fellowship and was assigned for 15 months to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology as a visiting engineer in the Man Vehicle Lab. Then in 1994, December, Dr. Robinson's life changed. He was selected as an astronaut and reported to Johnson Space Center in Houston. Uh, Dr. Robinson has been there and for many years since that time and has had many responsibilities in the space shuttle program. Uh, Dr. Robinson was the first Aggie in space and has flown on three shuttle missions, STS 85, 95, and 114 in years 97, 98, and 2005. He has logged over 830 hours, or 34 days, in space and traveled more than 14 million miles, including 20 hours outside the space shuttle. He is currently signed to fly again in STS-130, his fourth flight, which will depart February 2010. Since leaving UC Davis, Dr. Robinson has not forgotten about us, and he continually supports Davis in many ways. He established the Astronaut Alumni Scholarship Fund in the College of Engineering to recognize students with financial need in mechanical and aeronautical engineering. His, for his continued contributions, Dr. Robinson has been awarded the highest honor given by UC Davis, the UC Davis Medal in 2005. This is given to recognize individuals for their unique and extraordinary contributions to the university and the broader community of learning. It is my pleasure to introduce my good friend and one of UC Davis's and the College of Engineering's most distinguished alumni. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Robinson. Thank you, Bruce, and congratulations, graduates. You know, it's an honor to be here. For me, it's the only place I've ever given a commencement address. And um, so this is a very special place for me, but it's a very personally an honor for me to be invited by uh, Dean White after more than 30 years of friendship and mentorship for his first commencement as Dean for me to be the speaker. So it's a great honor for me for that reason too. It's also rather intimidating to stand before such a collected, intelligent community with such intellect and accomplishment. So I will uh, try to get this done quickly. Someday you'll be in my shoes and you'll see what I mean. It's a rare opportunity to be in the presence of so many who are absolutely destined to change civilization. However, I do realize that the only thing that stands between that diploma and all those years of study that you've just completed is me, so I'll make this brief. <laughs> all commencement speakers tell their audience that the future belongs to you, the future depends on you. It's up to you new graduate students or graduates to rescue society from the current generation's misdeeds and to make this world a better place for us all. And yes, I am here to tell you exactly that, but I don't really think you need me to tell you that. It's fairly obvious that the world needs youthful brilliance. But I do want to remind you of something, just one thing, that I believe is essential for you to succeed as engineers. You are now graduates of one of the best engineering schools in this country. Yeah, let's hear it.
graduates of one of the best engineering schools in this country. Does that mean you're engineers? Well, mostly it means that you're glowing bundles of barely contained potential energy at this point. But although your experience level today is low in the category of engineering employment, and I hope it doesn't stay that way for too long, you may be close to your personal peak of creativity and imagination at this stage in your life. And I want you to appreciate how, more, how important this quality is. A combination of hard-won technical knowledge plus your current wild imagination makes each one of you one of the most valuable and promising individuals on planet Earth. And this is the theme of my message for you here today. It's simple. Creativity is the essence of what it means to be an engineer. And you need to work hard over your whole career to protect and develop your own personal creative potential. It's an endangered natural resource. Engineers create. That is what it means to be an engineer. Scientists seek to understand the planet, our universe, ourselves, the many other professions you could have chosen enable society to function and for civilization to become more civilized. But only in the arts and in engineering is creativity the defining element of success. When I first came here to UC Davis, I couldn't decide whether to major in art and music or in engineering, and I wondered how I ever got such a split personality. And it took me it took me years to realize that in terms of creativity and invention, that the arts and engineering exist, exist right next to each other. In fact, with an overlap. So why is creativity such a big thing in engineering? Because engineers in this world are in charge of the future being different. Throughout history, the successful civilizations have been the ones that advanced technologically. Making tomorrow better than today requires a fundamental aspect of techn technical knowledge paired with imagination, something we now call engineering. So although all of society plays a role in shaping the future, of course, it doesn't really get done without the engineers generating the ideas, the technical advances, inventing things, solving existing problems in new ways, or recognizing new problems that were not visible before. This is your job. So this is where you come in. It's not a last homework assignment. It's more serious than that. As you begin your engineering career as a UC Davis graduate, I ask you to learn to value your creativity, what you have in you right now. Find ways to explore it. Do your absolute best to hang on to it. Getting a good degree only gives you a taste of your own creativity. And in fact, what I consider this most, one of the most important aspects of engineering is barely recognized in your coursework. And that's because it's not really teachable. It's a personal natural resource, a personal natural resource in each of you. It's for you to value, to exercise, to replenish, and to grow. So as you enter the workforce, try not to let your successes or your failures attenuate your innate creativity. So in conclusion, I say to you engineering ags, who I admire so much and envy in many ways, never stop learning. Strive to excel. Don't give up. Share your blessings. And never forget that creativity is the essence of engineering. So I wish you luck as engineering in innovators, graduates of UC Davis, and now get your diplomas and go on to create our future. Thank you.